Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Parkbench Tutors, you can find us on Facebook or you can look us up on the internet parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast we're going to continue our cost accounting work with another look at absorption. We do have situations where the absorption costs that we calculate for budget purposes are either less than or greater than the actual figures at the end of the year, in which case we can have underabsorption and overabsorption. If we consider the use of direct labour hours and we want a rate for each direct labour hour, then we take the budgeted overhead and divide by the total for the budgeted direct labour hours. For example, if you look at the various costs, this is for Andromeda Division for the coming year, they project that they're going to use 85,000 in materials, 156,000 in direct labour and so on, and their factory overhead is going to be 84,000. Their planned production units are 18,000, so if we divided 84,000 by 18,000 we would have an overhead cost per unit. Now, that's okay for very simple situations, but it's not much use for the work that we've been doing. Where we have more than one production line, then we need to allocate and absorb on a different basis. So let's look at IO Technology, which had three production lines for optical instruments, cameras and laptop computers. We have their planned production, 5,000 units of optical instruments, 12,500 cameras, 2,500 for laptops. They have 20,000 units projected. The direct labour for unit for the optical instruments is 0.5, the machine time per unit 0.25, and you can see similar figures for the camera and for the laptop. So let's just look at direct labour hours for the moment. If we make sure we know the total time, in other words the total time for direct labour hours, then we can work out an absorption rate per labour hour. So for optical instruments 5,000 units at 0.5 hours per unit would give a total time of 2,500. On the same basis cameras would give 28,750, laptops 11,250. That gives us a total number of hours of 42,500. Now if total factory overheads were 150,000, I divide that by my 42,500 and I've got an absorption rate of £3.53 per labour hour. Now at the end of the year we find that there are some differences between the budget forecast and the actual costs. So the actual costs we find out for the overhead was 160000 per year. We need to think about recording the difference. First of all the actual overheads are 160000 we were using the hours and we said direct labour hours 2,500 for optical instruments, 28,750 for cameras, 11,250 for laptops, which gave us 42,500. We multiply this by 3.53, which is the absorption rate per direct labour hour, we get 150,000. We take the difference between the actual and the budgeted and we find we've got a difference of 10,000. The actual is 10,000 greater, which means that we have underabsorbed. Remember that the actual costs are not known until the end of the year, and that managerial reports are going to produce absorption rates based on budget forecasts until we get to the end of the year, and then we have either an under or an overabsorption of overhead. In this case, it's underabsorption. So the procedure we have to adopt is to adjust the gross profit. And quite simply, the simplest way to take it is when we take sales minus cost of sales for gross profit, if we've not subtracted sufficient uh, fixed overhead, then we subtract it now. So we say here less under absorption fixed overhead, that's £10,000, and that will give me a figure for an adjusted gross profit. Let's just look at another scenario where we have a fixed overhead resulting in factory cost being 155,000, but also where this affected the production of units. So we only got 4,000 optical items, 10,000 cameras, 
but we did get our two and a half thousand laptops. So if I look at this calculation, my actual overheads would relate to 155,000 and the calculation I'm going to make will be for 4,000 times 0 0.5 for the optical, 10,000 times 2.3 for the cameras, 2,500 times 4.5 I'm working on direct labour hours, so I get a total of 36,250 direct labour hours and I multiply that by the absorption rate that I've been using which was 3.53 and I find that my absorbed costs only come to £127,962.50 pence. so I've now got an underabsorption figure of £27,037.50 I would make the adjustment again by looking at the gross profit, subtracting the underabsorption and having an adjusted gross profit. I can also analyse my underabsorption by saying that if the budgeted fixed overhead was 150,000 but the actual was 155,000, then the increased spending was 5,000. If I look at the budgeted overheads at 150,000 and I calculate the overheads that I absorbed, I will then find that I've underabsorbed from underproduction by £22,037.50. pence. Of course, if I add those up, that, that comes to £27,037.50, which is, of course, our total underabsorption figure. So, what about other overheads? Well, what about variable overheads? Well, they are not affected by under or over absorption because we've done it as a variable cost per unit. Then the fall in activity would give a fall in variable overheads and that would always be the figure charged. A rise in activity would give a rise in variable overheads. So those things are not affected in the same way. It's the fixed overhead which is important. The fixed overhead. That ends our podcast brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. Park Bench Tutors can be found on parkbenchtutors.com and you can sign up on Moodle there for our playlists. Just visit parkbenchtutors.com. Sign up on Moodle. Simple as that. Thank you.